here at the entrance, uh, the north entrance of Wilderness Park, and behind me is a large uh, entry that originally was the entryway for Ep Epworth Park, uh, which uh, was a lake and boating area for early uh, pioneers back in the late 1800s, early 1900s here on the periphery of Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, Salt Creek that runs uh, through this park is uh, was a floodplain. It still is, and there was a lake called Epworth Lake that was back here uh, during the time period that they had this uh, uh, entrance built here. It's now a new uh, uh, facade that's over it, and I'll try to have some older pictures. Maybe I can post it with this, but. Uh, this is now known, if you look, if you Google it, it's known as Hell's Gate, which is an interesting uh, concept considering that this is uh, an entrance in uh, a Wilderness Park that's currently called Hell's Gate. And it's an area I'm very familiar with. Uh, it's a new, facade on this uh, actual entry way here uh, but originally it was called Electric Park and Epworth Park because it was one of the first parks to have electricity during the early late 1800s early 1900s uh, the people of the plains would come here and gather in this uh, around this riparian forest Salt Creek is on the periphery and we're on the periphery of Lincoln Nebraska uh, this would have been much cooler under the canopy of the trees and because there was a lake that was here which no longer exists uh, people would go boating and uh, there were religious revivals and other activities here um, primarily the last 30 years that i've been coming to this location um, i've uh, had a lot of experience uh, that in, um, initially got me into the bigfoot research that i do today and what happened uh, early on my visits here were uh, kind of anecdotal things that I couldn't quite put, get my head around, but later in the history and the experiences that I had here, I was able to uh, construct kind of a timeline of, of my experiences. So when I first started coming here back in the 90s, the late 80s, I was primarily, there's trail systems here. This is 10 mile long uh, trail. And what I was doing is I was traveling on these, this trail and um, there was about 70 miles of trail networks in here. So I was doing some running, a friend of mine and I would come here, we would do running uh, through the trails and had a lot of kind of strange experiences. Actually uh, encountered uh, some weird smells in certain areas as we would run through and it was for a whole summer it was like a dead animal kind of a sulfur smell that uh, turned out to never go away it just was lingering all summer so and my initially i thought it was a dead animal but uh, now in retrospect i know it's not that that's not what it was we were running by um, certain large bushes like lilac bushes and that would be, there would this sense of fear would be there in the air. I mean, literally, as you entered this lowland area, it was much cooler, but there was a sense of fear as you rode, drove, you know, ran uh, by these bushes. So I always thought that that was strange, but I never really had any uh, suspicion that it was Bigfoot activity. Uh, later in the 2000s, I got into mountain biking and with the 70 miles of trails here, I did a considerable amount of uh, biking through, the, through these trails. And during that time, I encountered some other experiences that, that got me thinking of connection to Bigfoot. Uh, I found um, I would, there often, there were a lot of deer that would just dart off, like a dozen at a time would dart off and run right out in front of you in a very wooded area. So something was scaring them and, and chasing them. The other thing is uh, I found some uh, deer uh, actually, it would be fawn legs, about uh, probably 18 inches long, broken off at the um, joint. And I got off my bike and looked at it, and it was clearly it not it was not a 
coyote or a wild dog or a cougar or something like that that had taken the leg off. There were no bite marks on it. But what it was, was actually, uh, it appeared something had pulled it off at the joint. So that uh, was interesting. I later found two more uh, people who corroborated with me. They had found different uh, fawn legs on these trails, one here and then one in, uh, in uh, an adjacent park, um, is Pioneers Park from here, and years later. And what I had found is that is a connection to uh, to Big Bigfoot, to Sea Tonga. And so what what I've started putting together at that time uh, was that there was some activity in this area, but I wasn't quite sure what to think of it. Um, later in the 2000s, then I got into doing um, uh, Bigfoot research, started doing some research and looking online. Uh, I had had an interest in that for probably 40 years and had some early experiences, but through the research that I had been doing online, uh, through the BFRO and looking up uh, the different um, experiences people had, the different reports, I, I noticed that there had been some reports in this area and there were some consistencies in the findings along the Salt Creek. So I went on an expedition. I was fortunate to get accepted to go uh, on a BFRO expedition back in 2011. And it was, um, wasn't in this area. It was in uh, Shad uh, Pine Ridge uh, National Forest in western Nebraska. But upon meeting uh, people there and learning about Bigfoot, uh, it really opened my eyes to the possibilities of them being here on the periphery. Matter of fact, one of the gentlemen there told me that he thought for sure, uh, you know, this if there are sighting here, sightings here in the past, that they're probably still here. I, uh, through the research I, I had done since then, the, there's Dakota sandstone caves here that I believe they are utilizing as their home. Uh, they're coming in and out of this uh, corridor, which again is about 10 miles long and about 70 miles worth of trails. So um, what, what, we're, what I'm seeing is that they're in this area. This park is closed at night. During the day, there are people who are out here and traveling and hiking in and out of here. But at night, this is largely uh, inaccessible where people don't, are not supposed to be coming in here and, and getting into the park. So that they have uh, pretty much free reign of this park uh, during that uh, during the, the night hours. My experience in, increased then once I got exposure to the possibility of them being here. I started, uh, d did research in Iowa and had been on an expedition in New Mexico and really got familiar with their tree and stick structures and began taking note as I uh, was in the park and finding actual structures that I attributed to them, arches, X's, those sorts of uh, uh, smaller uh, stick structures and the whole tree structures that I believe the alpha male was making. Uh, a friend of mine, Scott, who I had met at the expedition, um, him and I uh, were here in the park one day, not very far from where I'm at here. Matter of fact, I've, I've chosen not to do research much in here because I had a great deal of activity at my own home, which isn't too far away. Uh, from the visits that I've been doing here. But particularly I gave uh, some honey um, as a gift and I wound up having um, a series of events happen in my own uh, property after doing that. I did a wood knock and then I had a bunch of uh, honey, a big container of honey that I hung up at a tree next to it, a street, tree structure here. I, um, from that experience, I realized that if you visit their home, that they'll come visit you. And that whole kind of philosophy was something I was very naive and, and didn't fully understand as a researcher. So uh, as that became evident, the visits that I had at my own property, I uh, began to understand I really didn't want to have that sort of thing happening. I didn't want to be a, have that a part of my life. So what I wound up doing is I did a lot of research uh, outside and started going to the Omaha Reservation. And through my research on the Omaha Res, I was able to uh, connect, make connections where we had gotten together uh, with the Omaha Res squatching and got to do a lot of research away from my own uh, research area, which is this area here that I initially started out. Um, a lot of the parallel things, the tree and stick structures, 
uh, stick structures that I had identified helped uh, grow our research there on the Omaha Res. And that's where I continue to do the majority of my research today. But I wanted to uh, kind of draw a few correlations here. What, ha what had happened uh, in a dozen uh, plus years that I had done this research is I began um, getting connected to uh, researchers around the world. And one of the researchers that I uh, was involved with was Dr. Igor Burtseff through some DNA research. Uh, when I had explained to him that I thought their uh, uh, contagions affected the uh, populations of the, of the um, Yeti in Russia, uh, he, he made it clear that he believed it was more of the Orthodox Christian Church and that they forbid uh, Christians from interacting with these beings. And I later, uh, Dmitry Bayanov, who is an author, uh, one of my um, early um, mentors back in the 2018, um, with research that had been done, we did a paper on hominology together and uh, the definition of history and application. And that, uh, he had written a book, and, and in that book he talks about uh, the fact that they would have uh, incantations uh, for Christians when they went out, uh, if they were accosted by these beings, especially females, the, that to not leave, to, uh, leave them alone and to go to the forest, uh, to the wood dens and, uh, and to interact with their own people, not with us. So it was very clear that Christians were not, uh, were, were not to interact with these in the Orthodox uh, Christian church. And I find that interesting. So uh, here, after all these years, um, um, this, this entrance of, this, of the park that I've done quite a bit of research in. The interesting thing, last year, uh, Duke from World Bigfoot Radio and uh, Blaine Tyler and Christy Sci-Fi, they were here for, uh, to, to film a documentary, um, Inevitably Finding Bigfoot. And we had a great deal of activity. I took them to another end. I didn't bring them to, to this location. But we had a lot of uh, activity as far as um, we actually saw, uh, visually saw some Bigfoot in this area. And we had um, done drone footage and a lot of, uh, there was just a lot of uh, tree and stick structures. And the history that I had uh, explained to them during that documentary, it was good to be able to um, share that with other researchers. Over the years, I've had a few researchers come here uh, with me and research this area, but by and large, I've stayed away from it. Uh, not too far from here is the Karst Cave System, Robber's Cave, and that cave system is what I believe is mirrored within this park of various Bigfoot uh, uh, homes that they would live in, their dwellings. They would be underground. It would be about 50 degrees. Uh, year round there and from there they could access a variety of, uh, of, the, of plant life and animal life for to sustain them. So at that, at that point, um, this I, I switched my research to another area, but what I wanted to point out, uh, it's interesting coming back from what originally had been a I found from this research is that there are parallels, uh, especially when you're look, looking at it under the lens of religion. And it's interesting that over the years we've went from this park being named uh, uh, Epworth Park, Electric Park, and now this, this actual entrance, uh, which I find interesting, has been uh, changed and the name is Hell's Gate, apparently. So I don't... Uh, quite know what to make of that, that as far as a connection to the research that I'm doing, but it is interesting that the times that we're living in now and the world, the way it's uh, changed so much just within the last five to ten years, uh, it's almost a paradigm shift that we're, we've entered into some other, um, uh, other uh, uh, future, that, if you will. So. I just thought this was interesting and uh, I wanted to kind of share some of my research and while I was uh, here and also kind of explain some of the history uh, involved here. Um, I continue to do my bulk of my research up on the Omaha Res, 
but, and I've literally stayed away from this area because of the, the interactions that I had had at my own home um, and did not want to, I, I actually am not going into the woods next to me here where I, where I have had a lot of those interactions, but uh, I, I continue to do my research and, and look forward to many more years of doing it. And I thought it was important to uh, come to this location and kind of show where some of the original research where I started at and what kind of shaped uh, my early beginnings in this research. So this is Richard Soule in the land of the giants. Oh.